Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Wayne's World of Science and Technology. Also, Happy New Year to everyone. Now, this is totally unscripted for the simple reason that every time I try and write a script, it gets bogged down in details, and I don't want to give you details. I'm going to talk about COVID. I'm going to talk about epidemics in general but I'm going to be talking in generalization for the very simple reason that if I were to mention a specific uh, vaccine, say, against COVID, people would tend to fixate on that and say, oh, okay, he talked about that one only specifically. Well, instead of doing that, I'm going to talk gener generalities, stuff that you can apply to anything. So let's start off with um, disease itself. Uh, and... I'll start off by saying this is very much a numbers game. Unfortunately, the um, losers don't survive, which is why we need to be on top of stuff like this. So when a new disease pops up, what happens is that disease, having crossed from animal to human, has to have an impact. And when I say it has to have an impact, it has to actually be able to infect a human and then transfer to another human. When we got hit with the original SARS, SARS-CoV-1, it was too deadly. Um, yes, it killed a lot of people, but it killed people before they could trans before they could transfer it. They died, they became sick and died uh, before they could uh, spread the disease, in other words. Uh, the same is more or less true of MERS. MERS, uh, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, also has a tendency to die out in humans. It's just a little bit too deadly in us. And it doesn't get transferred. People get sick immediately. They don't wander around sick for days, letting, you know, shedding virus. With SARS-CoV-2, uh, COVID-19, in other words, we've got a different situation. We've got a situation where people can walk around for days, up to a week even, being ill and not realize it. During this time, they can pass around the virus to anybody they meet who's, you know, anyone in close contact with them. And that's why I say it's very much a numbers game. One of the things you have to do to make yourself safe is you have to reduce your number of contacts. And pardon me, but my voice is getting dry. This is, quite frankly, um, a nuisance. Um, there are people I would dearly love to see, who I have not seen since before this started. I'm just not going to endanger them by going to visit. It isn't worth their life. It isn't worth my life. You have to play the numbers in such a way as they come out in your favor. Now, yes, this sounds a little bit on the nasty side, but think about it. You do this every day when you leave your house. You get up in the morning, you look outside, you say, oh, there's snow, I need my boots on. You've made a conscious decision to make yourself safer. There's a strong wind, I need to make sure I have my scarf. I need to make sure I have my gloves. Well, this is standard stuff that people do every day. It's nothing different what we're doing when we're dealing with the pandemic. We're doing basic stuff. We're sitting down and going, okay, is this an appropriate thing to do at this time for the payback? And that's what it comes down to. What is the payback? And, you know, look at automobiles. How many people die in automobile crashes every year? Statistically, Someone is going to die in the next minute or so. It's just the way it is. I can only try and bend the odds in my favor by being a cautious driver. 
by looking out for other people to make sure that they're doing what they should be doing, that they're staying in their lane. And that is the same thing everyone else does. If there's areas of town where uh, roads are bad, you maybe drive around that. If there's areas where you're uncomfortable because you think the area is dangerous for whatever reason, you avoid that area. You make these decisions every day and you do them unconsciously. What we have to start doing is doing the same things in regards to this pandemic. Make those decisions unconsciously as to what is appropriate based on what is going on at the time. So, for example, there are a lot of YouTubers out there who have covered uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. And several YouTubers who were at the uh, premiere have come down with COVID. I have a suspicion it may have become a spreader event. I have a suspicion that the entire opening week of Spider-Man No Way Home may have become a spreader event. Do I know? Well, no, I don't yet. I don't think we'll have any numbers for another week or so, but yeah, it's quite a good possibility that between that and um, Omicron, we could see a huge upsurge in cases and hospitals overwhelmed. Now, that also depends upon a lot of other things. Were the people in the theaters masked? If they weren't, your odds of something going wrong has just gone up. Remember what I said about playing the odds? You've got to sit down. You've got to look at the numbers. <coughs> if everyone in a theater is masked, it's a different situation than if no one is masked except for you. And you've got to look at those numbers and say, okay, is this situation one that I feel appropriate for me? And yeah, I know there's going to be people out there who are going to be saying any moment now, oh, you big coward. I'm actually probably going to get some death threats over this video because I'm going to get into some other things that I know people are not going to be happy about. But, say, la vie, it's happened before. It will happen again. And if you think that sending a death threat to a guy who thinks that it's actually quite funny and pathetic on your part is a good idea, I have some oceanfront condominiums to sell you in Regina. Think about that. Anyway, so it all comes down to numbers. You've got to play the numbers. If you've got a disease which hits one out of a um, hundred people really hard, so you know, we're talking one person, doesn't sound like much, but one out of a hundred. You have a uh, population of a hundred million people, that's one million people sick. Can you think of any country of a hundred million that could handle that many people in hospital? There isn't the hospital beds in any country. There aren't the doctors and the nurses. That's why people have been talking about bending the curve. Because if we want to keep the hospitals open and free so that people can get in there for other things, and you know, don't forget, you've also got people who are in hospital for things like uh, births, uh, possibly someone's in for cancer treatment, somebody else broke a leg playing ice hockey. You cannot just turn around and say, oh, we're kicking everybody else out of the hospital to make room for the COVID patients, you can't do it. And so it comes down to a numbers game. You have to look at the numbers and say, okay, what is appropriate for me to do? Now, let's get into vaccines, because I know that's part of what's going to upset people. Most people don't have an, any idea how vaccines work. What they do is they turn around and give your immune system some information. And that information turns around and tells your immune system that, oh, if I run into this, I need to take action against it. That's all that vaccines do. So your immune system has gotten this bit of information and hopefully 
that bit of information works. And when I say hopefully, you'll see things saying that this vaccine has a 90% effectiveness. What that means is that 90 out of 100 people will be have a positive immune boost from the vaccine. The other 10 won't and can quite easily get sick and die. Why won't they get that immune boost? Well, it could be because of pre-existing conditions. You know, possibly they've had, uh, they're on immunosuppressant drugs of some sort. Why um, doesn't matter. The point is that you've got these people who are not going to be covered. You know, as I said, I'm not talking about any specific vaccine. If you check, all vaccines have a rating. And that percentage rating says that we will protect this percentage of the population. And you can turn around and say, okay, if it's 85%, well, that's 85 out of 100 people are protected and 15 out of 100 aren't. That's the sort of thing you can use when you're playing numbers. You look at that and say, oh, well, I'd rather go for the vaccine that gives me the higher protection rate. And that actually is what I did do. <coughs> So we've got another thing which the vaccine says, which is, okay, even if you do get COVID, you aren't likely to die. And people who are vaccinated, even if it doesn't kick their immune system into full gear, um, still have an advantage because their immune system has partial recognition capabilities against the disease. And this partial recognition means that when the infection starts, it can, your immune system can go, oh, okay, I recognize at least part of this, and I'll start taking action against it, and that'll make things easier on the rest of your system. Because when your body breaks down, it's because there's too many things hit, hitting it at once. And reducing it to you know, one of those things makes a huge difference. So... That's why even people who aren't fully protected are still partially protected. Uh, the people who are fully protected, well, if they get exposed to the virus that is of the same strain that the vaccine is for, and I'll say that that's important right there, then if that strain, uh, if they come into contact with that strain, it will not be able to infect them. Their uh, antibodies will turn around and go, oh, we know what this is, bang, and COVID gets booted. That's it. They have no issues. Now, as I said, going to the people who aren't so lucky, well, some of them can get really sick and some of them can die. But it makes it a lot worse for them if there's a whole bunch of people around who are totally unvaccinated and have no immunity at all. And, well, I keep hearing people yelling natural immunity and oh, I had COVID already. The problem is that viruses mutate. Every year when the influenza virus uh, vaccine is designed in the summer, they design it based on where they think the virus is going to mutate. Sometimes they get it right, sometimes they get it wrong. This year, they got it halfway uh, wrong, according to what I understand, which means that you're protected, just not to the same extent if you get the influenza virus. Now, with COVID, COVID doesn't uh, mutate as fast as the influenza virus does. Thank God. Uh, it has been mutating at its own rate, and so far, the mutations, well, okay, Delta was extremely deadly. None of them were that far different. Uh, in other words, the vaccines could handle them. The newest one, Omicron, has some uh, weirdness to it, and it's a bit harder for the vaccines to handle. However, even if the vaccine doesn't fully protect you, so, okay, you've got you've been fully vaccinated, you've been boosted, and you catch Omicron. What happens? Well, maybe you get sick, maybe you need a few days off work, but you aren't in hospital. Your body has, still has the basic information needed to start fighting. It just doesn't, have, it just doesn't have enough of it to handle this specific variant. So 
getting vaccinated and getting boosted makes a huge difference for you. It also makes a huge difference for the people around you. If you aren't um, I love it, my mind goes blank. If you aren't communicable for as long because your body manages to throw off the infection quicker, that means it's not going to translate for your transfer to as many of your friends and family. And that protects them. It also protects you because you can get it back from them if they aren't uh, vaccinated. So you've got to really look at it from a point of view of how can I turn this, this to my advantage? How can I make these numbers work for me? Yes, it's going to be a pain in the neck until we have a universal COVID vaccine. I agree, and I'm not looking forward to it. But it is what it is. Magical thinking just doesn't work. We've got to sit down. We've got to basically hunker down and say, okay, we've got problems. Let's handle them. If we don't, well, if you've got overflowing hospitals, you end up with people who die who didn't need to, and I'd really rather not be responsible for that. My ethics... Uh, wouldn't allow me to. Anyway, uh, that's all I have to say tonight. I'm sorry if I kind of branded at you, but it's such an important thing. Play the numbers. Look at it. Think about what you're doing. Try to get it down to a habit. You know, little things. Make sure your mask is up before you enter a store. Make sure other people's masks are up before you enter a store. If you see somebody in a store with, whose mask is below their nose, avoid them. You can usually walk around. The point being that there are all sorts of little things you can do to make yourself safer. Yeah, they're a pain in the neck. They're inconvenient. And all that stuff. And, yeah, I've missed funerals too this year that I really would have liked to have go to, gone to. It is what it is. We can't change life. Right now we've got a problem, and if we all work together, we can handle it. Have a good evening, and I hope, <clears throat> hope all of you have a good New Year. Bye-bye.